Kevin Stevens sat alone, staring at a locked door in his prison cell. The echoing sounds of inmate activity filled the air, a stark contrast to the warmth of his family embrace just the night before. Arrested by FBI agents in a pre-dawn raid, Stevens found himself facing federal charges and confronting his own fears and regrets. Despite his stature and past resilience, he could not shake the overwhelming sense of shame, panic, and loneliness. As he grappled with the consequences of his actions and the impact on his loved ones, he reflected on his decade-long struggle with addiction. As Kevin Stevens sat in his prison cell, he couldn't help but wonder, how did it come to this? Once he embodied the American dream, a star athlete from a blue-collar family in Pembroke, just south of Boston, he captained every high school varsity team, earned a full ride to elite college, and soared to become an Olympian and an NHL sensation. Stevens raised two Stanley Cups with the Pens in the early 90s, placing him alongside legends like Mario Lemieux. His prowess as a power forward earned him accolades and one of the NHL's top salaries. But tragedy struck on the ice, shattering his career and his life. A devastating injury crushed the bones in his forehead. This left permanent damage to his brain's frontal lobe. Unable to reclaim his former glory, Stevens spiraled down into addiction, grappling with party drugs like cocaine and opioids for over two decades. His arrest was for dealing oxycodone in 2016, and it felt like the final blow, a rock bottom he never imagined. But now, in the solitude of his own cell, Stevens prayed for redemption, yearning for one last chance to rebuild his shattered life. Kevin Stevens' early life epitomized the American dream, a blue-collar kid from Pembroke, Massachusetts, with a natural talent in sports. His father, Artie, a former minor league baseball player, nurtured Kevin's athletic abilities onto the makeshift rink in their backyard. Despite not being able to skate himself, Artie encouraged Kevin's love for hockey, resulting in a remarkable success at a very young age. Kevin's exceptional talent actually led him to offers from prestigious colleges, and he even caught the attention of professional baseball teams. Ultimately, he was drafted by the Los Angeles Kings before his first year in college. With the opportunity to turn pro in either hockey or baseball, Stevens opted for the safer route, accepting a full scholarship to play hockey for Boston College. Excelling both on and off the ice at that point, he graduated with a degree in economics and made his mark on the international stage, representing the U.S. at the 1988 Olympics. Despite Team USA's lackluster performance, Stevens showcased his skills alongside future NHL stars. At just 22 years old, he joined the Pittsburgh Penguins, scoring his first NHL goal in his debut game. Known for his physicality and scoring prowess, Stevens quickly became a fan favorite and a key player for the Pens. In his first full NHL season, Stevens dominated the ice, tallying an impressive 70 points while earning a reputation as a friendly giant both on and off the rink. Dubbed Artie by his teammates in homage to his father, Stevens brought joy and camaraderie to the locker room, even earning admiration from hockey legends like Mario Lemieux. With his infectious personality, Stevens made every game day experience memorable for his teammates, solidifying his place as a beloved figure in the league. In the early 1990s, Kevin Stevens reached the pinnacle of his life. He was married to his high school sweetheart Suzanne, and he even earned a substantial salary as a Pittsburgh Penguin, and it really felt like he was living his dream to the fullest. His playoff debut in 1991 earned him his first Stanley Cup, a moment he cherished as accumulation of years of hard work. More importantly, Stevens emerged as a key piece during this historic playoff run, solidifying his reputation as one of the league's top power forwards. The following season, he continued to shine, leading the Pens in goals and finishing second in league scoring. Just three seasons into his NHL career, Stevens had seemingly achieved the American dream. However, his world would soon come crashing down. In the 91-92 season, Kevin Stevens had another stellar performance finishing second in league scoring between NHL legends Wayne Gretzky and Mario Lemieux. However, the following year would bring a devastating turn of events. During the 1993 playoffs, while facing the New York Islanders in a crucial game, Stevens collided with defenseman Rich Pilon in a violent on-ice incident. 
The impact left Stevens unconscious and with severe injuries. He had a broken and twisted nose, a shattered forehead, and a busted orbital bone. He was rushed to the hospital and underwent extensive surgery to reconstruct his forehead using nine metal plates just for his nose. The physical injuries were significant, but the damage to his frontal lobe raised even greater concerns about his cognitive abilities. As Stevens lay in the hospital, his teammates visited, witnessing the extent of his injuries. Despite having months to recover and even having a return on the ice, Stevens was just never the same. This traumatic incident marked a turning point in his life and career, altering his path in ways he could never have imagined. Before we continue with how Stevens' life declined, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to our channel. Dealt to the Rangers in 1997, Kevin Stevens struggled to reclaim his former glory on the ice. But off the rink, his charm and generosity still endeared him to his teammates. Despite his popularity, Stevens was battling a hidden demon. One fateful morning in St. Louis was jolted by a drug-induced haze by a thunderous knock on his door. A panic flooded his body and he realized the police were at his door. Slowly, he opened up to face the reality of the situation. While surgery had repaired the physical damage from his on-ice injury, Stevens was grappling with the unseen scars. Despite having a promising return to the Penguins following his recovery, his life began to unravel. Stevens' descent into addiction began with one single night of cocaine use before his injury. However, it was the heavy reliance on painkillers during his recovery that fueled his downward spiral. Despite having attempts to resist the urge to use drugs, addiction consumed him, leading to a secretive behavior and deteriorating performance on the ice. Unable to confront his addiction, Stevens had hid his struggles from his teammates and his loved ones, descending into a cycle of drug-seeking behavior and deteriorating physical and mental health. Despite his attempt at a fresh start with the Boston Bruins, his addiction followed him ultimately leading to his enrollment in the NHL Substance Abuse Program while playing with the Los Angeles Kings. Over time, Stevens' career faded, and so did his one charismatic personality. He was replaced by a sense of weariness and isolation. His downward spiral went unnoticed by many until his struggles became impossible to ignore. After two disappointing seasons with the LA Kings, Kevin Stevens was traded to the Rangers in 97. At 32 years old and struggling with addiction, Stevens' career was on a downward spiral. The Rangers intervened and Stevens spent part of the summer of 1998 in a rehabilitation facility in Los Angeles, receiving support from teammate Wayne Gretzky. Through all of his efforts to overcome addiction, Stevens again found himself in rehab the following summer. This time, he admitted to struggling with prescription drugs prescribed by team doctors since the mid-1990s. In January 2000, Stevens' addiction came to a head-on collision when he was arrested for possession of drug paraphernalia in a motel room in Collinsville, Illinois. Facing public exposure of his long-hidden struggle, Stevens felt shame and remorse for the impact he had on his family and friends. Determined to turn his life around, though, he vowed to seek the help he needed. Following his arrest, Stevens left the Rangers and underwent rehabilitation. He then signed with the Philadelphia Flyers, but saw limited playing time before being traded back to Pittsburgh, where his NHL journey began. Despite returning to a familiar territory, Stevens' career fizzled out, overshadowed by the lingering effects of addiction. Before his injury, Stevens had been a dominant force on the ice, averaging an impressive goal and point total. However, over the years following his injury, his performance plummeted, mirroring the devastating impact of addiction on his life and career. Reflecting on his struggles, Stevens acknowledged the ruinous effect addiction had on his hockey career, a stark contrast from the promising trajectory he once had. Kevin Stevens loved his children deeply, but his addiction made him a distant and unreliable father. He would forget to pick them up or to show up at their hockey games, causing heartache for his family. After retiring, Steven attempted to live a normal life in Duxbury, focusing on being the best father he could. However, the grip of addiction still consumed him, leaving him miserable feelings despite his sobriety. He credits his ex-wife Suzanne for holding the family together during this tumultuous time. A neck injury led Stevens back to his painkillers, which quickly escalated into a dependence of opioids. Desperate for relief, he resorted to any means necessary to obtain drugs, spending thousands of dollars and pawning his prized possessions, including his Stanley Cup rings. Despite his struggles, Stevens found work as a scout with the Penguins in 2006, 
but his addiction continued to overshadow his life. His erratic behavior and absenteeism strained his relationships, particularly with his children, who never knew which version of their father would show up. Reflecting on his actions, Stevens acknowledges the damage his addiction caused to his family life. Despite moments of sobriety, he recognizes that addiction made him a bad father, husband, son, and brother, robbing him of the ability to present for his loved ones. Even in his role as a scout, his addiction hindered his ability to fully commit to his work. On March 18, 2010, Kevin Stevens was surprised to find himself summoned to Ray Sherrow's suite at Boston's TD Garden before Penguins game against the Bruins. As he walked in, he was greeted by Shero along with the representatives from the NHL and NHLPA substance abuse program. It was clear why they were there. They were interventing to send Stevens to rehab. Despite his initial laughter, Stevens admitted to his family and friends that he had a problem and he agreed to give rehab another try. However, his stint in a Florida rehabilitation facility lasted less than 30 days before he was kicked out for starting a relationship with another patient. Subsequently, the Penguins fired him and Stevens continued to spiral downward. He became unreachable, changed phone numbers frequently, and borrowed money from friends and family. Some, like former teammate John Cullen, decided to cut ties with him entirely, recognizing that Steven needed to take more responsibility for his own recovery. In November 2011, Steven's father Arthur was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Despite this strained relationship, Stevens tried to support his father during his illness. However, as his father's condition worsened, he made a poignant request to his daughter Kelly to promise to not give up on Kevin and to help him get better. Kelly agreed, but tragically, Arthur passed away a few months later. Having averaged 44 goals and 96 points in his first five full NHL seasons, Kevin Stevens' final eight seasons saw a dramatic decline with averages dropping to just 12 goals and 28 points. On December 16, 2014, while under the influence of opioids and Ambien, Stevens fell asleep at the wheel and crashed into another vehicle head first. He sustained severe injuries, including broken vertebral discs in his neck and a fractured collarbone. Miraculously, he survived the crash, but spent weeks in intensive care before going back to rehab for months. Although the crash offered Stevens a second chance at life, he continued to struggle with addiction. In November, while his partner Fallon was five months pregnant, Stevens arranged to pick up a package of illegally obtained oxycodone as a part of a drug dealing scheme. Despite being a notable public figure, Stevens was implicated in an FBI investigation into the drug trade. He was caught receiving a bag of 175 oxycodone pills from a dealer and was subsequently pulled over by the agents. Over the next four months, agents repeatedly pressured Stevens to cooperate them to implicate others involved in the drug trade, but he refused to deliver any valuable information. Despite the impeding birth of his child, Stevens remained entrenched in his addiction. When Fallon ran into labor in March 2016, Stevens arrived at a hospital late and visibly high, leaving his family disheartened and questioning if there was any hope left for him. Now clean, for 19 months, Kevin Stevens has embraced a new life with passion. After facing the possibility of a year in prison, he had made a pivotal decision to change his life. Attending regular AA meetings and working with his sponsor Phil Barano, he committed to sobriety knowing any slip could lead him into a dire consequence. Reconnecting with a friend from AA, Ron Hayes, Stevens found unwavering support. Hayes, who had chosen sobriety years before, became a lifeline for Stevens, driving into early morning meetings and offering guidance and companionship. Together, they discussed leaving the past behind and embracing hope for the future. As Stevens prepared for his trial, his friends and family rallied around him, submitting letters to the court detailing his true character and the struggles he faced. Despite prosecutors' skepticism, the judge, George O'Toole, showed leniency, sentencing Stevens to a probation and a fine with the condition of involvement in public speaking and anti-drug efforts. Walking out of the courthouse, Stevens felt a sense of relief and determination. If this was rock bottom, it was also a chance for redemption. With the support of his loved ones and a newfound commitment to his sobriety, he was ready to seize the opportunity for a fresh start. For more NHL content like this, click the video on the screen and let us know in the comments below what you think the NHL can do to limit the impacts of concussion. Would any action take away from the fun of the game? And if you like this video, don't be a bender. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, help the algorithm, help us grow, and... 
See you next time.